Okay, let's see what we got. MacBook. Binoculars. Tiny notebook. Cannot go anywhere without that. I feel like I have a knife in here somewhere. There it is. And then... Batteries. You can never have too many batteries. I'm a gear girl. I'm like a boy scout. I'm always prepared. But who doesn't like stuff? Clearly you do. That's why you clicked on this video. <laughs> I suppose I should start the video now. My knife and my Swiss Army knife, because this would not be an EDC video without those two things. Now, I actually have a couple of knives, but I can't seem to find the other one. If I find it before I'm done putting this video together, I'll be sure to insert some B-roll here. There's nothing special about it. I don't remember what brand it is. In fact, I got it long before I knew much about EDC or knives or anything like that. But the biggest reason I misplaced it is because lately I've been using my open all knife. We can add this to the laundry list of things that Michael Christie convinced me to buy, and I'm so happy that he did because this thing is freaking awesome. Now, Open All, they're a company that has been making knives for like 150 years. What I have here is the number eight in steel. The number eight is their most popular like pocket knife. It's super discreet, lightweight, minimalist design. One of my favorite things about this knife is for the number eight in particular, they make these cool little picnic attachments for it. So you can buy them separate or you can buy them with the knife, but they come with this cute little napkin and a fork and a spoon. And all you have to do is attach it to the knife, turn the locking mechanism, and you have a fork on the go. It's been great for me because I usually take my lunch with me to work and eat it before my shift. Then all I have to do is just take the silverware home, wash it off, pop it back in my car. It's just been great and I've been getting a lot of use out of it. Now I wanna talk about my Victorinox Swiss Army knife. I have had this thing for a really long time. And most of Victorinox products come with a lifetime guarantee and I can see why. Like I have had this thing so long that the logo has just worn away, like it's gone. And that is pretty much the only. My camera overheated. I didn't even know that was a thing, but apparently it, it happens. It's also a million degrees outside. So I figured I would come inside, yes, hello, and talk to you about the watches that I've been wearing lately. First up, my Tudor Black Bay 58 in blue, which shouldn't be surprising because I just did my year on the wrist video. Next is my Oris Aquas Clean Ocean Edition, which happens to be the watch that I'm wearing right now and is probably the one that I'm the most sentimentally attached to in my entire collection. And then finally, this one was a little surprising for me, but it's still getting a lot of wrist time. I have my little gold Casio. It's nice to have a digital watch in rotation. This is very low profile, but it's still fun. It was really inexpensive. I think it was like 60 bucks. And who doesn't love a cool 80s vibes Casio? This is my Douglas Field L lighter. It's pretty cool. It's brass. It's got this cool steampunky design to it. It's made in Japan. I can't remember what EDC site I got it from, but I did find it on Amazon. I think it's like 70 something dollars. But if you get the one in stainless steel that isn't all brass, it's a little bit cheaper. The other thing I really like about it is it has this little compartment on the bottom, just like hidden underneath the cap for extra flint. So if you're out and about and you run out of flint, you can just pop it in there and you're all ready to go. Super compact. I can put it in my pocket. I can put it in my bag. And honestly, it's just nice to have a lighter in your EDC collection. I primarily use it for lighting candles and very occasionally other activities, but primarily I use it for lighting candles. Now I want to talk about other tiny things that I carry around in my bag. In addition to my lighter, like most of the other EDC I'm going to show you today is housed in this vessel, my Blue to Shift messenger bag. We're going to open her up and you know what? I don't think this is the best top for this. I should probably change. That's better. Now we can go ahead and open up my bag. First up, let's talk about my tactical pen from the brand, the Atomic Bear. You can literally find these things all over the internet. I think I got mine from Amazon, it was like 20 bucks. Anyway, couple cool things about it. It has this ultra hard Tuxton carbon glass breaker tip. 
Uh, supposedly you can use it as a self-defense tool, but I would not want to be in a situation where I'm close enough to somebody that I would have to use it as that. That's why I have mace to get away from those potential situations. I don't know if it's good mace. I haven't had to use it yet, thankfully. But anyway, um, it also has an LED flashlight, aluminum body, and as the name would suggest, it is a pen. Just a really cool little thing to keep in your car. God forbid there's an emergency. Or if you keep it in your bag, you always have a pen. I also carry a regular pen. This is from the brand Picasso and Company. Apparently they make like jewelry and cufflinks and things like that. I don't really know much about that stuff, but they do make awesome pens. Yes. The tactical pen is awesome, but at the end of the day, it's a multi-tool. So it's really for those situations where you need a pen, but you don't have one. It's not 100% comfortable in my hand. This is, and this is what I primarily use for writing in my field's notes. Field notes. This is a little tiny notebook. This is a relatively new EDC item and I didn't know how badly I needed this until I had it. So basically the company makes little tiny notebooks and other stationery. And they have a cool origin story on their website. But for me, the reason this is changing my life is because I will get these ideas and I'll get them at the most inopportune times. But now, lately, I've been writing everything down in this little notebook. So later on, when I need to revisit those ideas, they're already here. And it's great because it fits in my pocket. I can put it in my bag. I always have it with me. We're almost done with all the stuff I have in my bag. Next, we have Altoids because even though it's not an EDC item, it's something I carry with me every single day. Then I have my wallet. Now I want to preempt this with, I have several wallets. This is just the one that I've been using the most lately. It's from the Thursday Boot Company. It's supposed to be a full grain Horween Chrome XL leather. Uh, considering the price point, it's held up remarkably well because I have not been gentle with it. The only thing I'm a little sad about is there used to be a Thursday logo either on this side or this side and it's gone now. It just kind of wore away with time, which is really weird because the Thursday every day didn't wear away. I wonder if it's just the placement. Then finally, we Subaru. Yes, I know that I don't carry my Subaru, but my Subaru carries me. So naturally I thought it deserved a mention in my EDC video. Some people might think it's silly, but personally I love my Subaru. I think it's the perfect marriage between old and new technology. My keys, I do keep them pretty minimalist. The only thing I have on here is my Grantstone shoehorn keychain, which does come in handy when I'm out and about. And that kind of brings me to the next topic that I want to talk about. Okay, so I know that technically boots and shoes are not part of EDC, but this would not be an Elizabeth Grant video if I didn't talk about my rapidly growing shoe collection. First up, we have my Red Wing Iron Rangers. Mine are in the amber harness leather. And honestly, I wear these mostly on days when I'm just hanging out in the woods. Then I have my Allen Edmonds Horsebit Loafers. They are a European style. They're actually made in Italy, which is super nice. Literally wear these all the time. They might actually be one of my favorite pairs of shoes. And now for my most impractical shoes that I own, my Allen Edmonds Team Colors Strandmox. Yes, I do have an impossible time finding a belt to go with them. And Yes, I only really wear them six months out of the year and only when it's like 70 degrees and sunny out. And no, I didn't think for a moment that these would be my first pair of Strandmox, but I do not regret buying them for a moment. They were a limited release and I had to act quickly. And I will say that this is one of the few impulse purchases that I've made that I don't regret for a second. That about sums it up for shoes, just like with watches. We could be here all day, so let's keep things light and move on to tech. As a part-time content creator, YouTuber, on days when I'm not working at my regular job, I'm either glued to this computer for 12 hours or I have a camera in my hands all day shooting and editing and making content for you. So naturally, I thought that those things deserved a place in my EDC video. Now, I'm not gonna show you everything that I use to make content here in my studio, but I'm just gonna show you the stuff that I take with me out in the field when I'm making content away from ah, home. Ah, that is uh -huh. not gonna work apparently. So first up, I have my 
Sony 6400, which is the camera that I'm shooting on right now. I did have a Canon for a little while, but I didn't love the image that I was getting from it. So I ended up selling it and exchanging it for a new wide angle lens. Most of the time when I'm shooting on my Sony, I'm using my 35 millimeter lens. That's what gives you this really cinematic look and that beautiful bokeh background. Then we need audio. So when I'm out and about, I'm primarily using my Rode wireless Go mic. And boy, does this thing have a ton of range. It also has a seven hour battery life. So even after shooting for the majority of the day, I still have plenty of battery left. And now that I've figured out the audio settings in my new editing software, the sound quality is pretty good. Then I have my iPhone 13, which I do shoot on occasionally. I have the 256 gigs because I shoot in 4K on my phone as well as on my regular camera. And I thought it was worth the investment to have the extra space. The great thing is I can just airdrop all of those clips that I do record onto my Mac or even my MacBook. Yes, I do have a laptop and a desktop. The desktop is what I use for editing my videos. And then the laptop I use for things like emails, writing scripts, Zoom calls. And then God forbid, if I lost internet or something happened to my Mac mini, I could edit and upload my videos on my MacBook Pro because I did get it with that in mind. Thanks for watching the video, guys. If you're new here and you're still watching at this point, then you should probably hit that subscribe button so you know when I post new videos just like this one.